Colonel Corrigan, being a former commander of clan forces, looks up at General Sin and says, What do you mean, sir, open to negotiations? Sin replies, I mean that if the leaders are any kind of leaders, they will withdraw from Europe to save the lives of their people. Graham responds, What about the area? You can't be serious about just leaving it to be taken by the indigenous personnel. Sin responds, From these reports, that will take some time, a lot of time. In fact, I doubt there are any humans within a thousand kilometers of any clan forces. Even if they see the ships leaving, they'll be more than willing to stay away. They look at an overview of Europe. If the intelligence is correct, then the dropship that crashed in the Mediterranean Sea has wiped out all life in Sicily, southern Italy, good portion of Spain, and a, everything on North African coast. From this model, the shock waves were felt all the way up to Britain. Dolphine interjects, Jump ships were never meant to enter an atmosphere, sir. This is why we always kept them at lunar orbit or after the initial drop. Sin responds, In any case, we need to establish contact with them the first thing in the morning. For right now, I want everybody to go get some sleep. I have a feeling tomorrow is going to be a very long day. Sin stays, spends most of the night figuring out how to get the European forces to join him. But that was not the only problem. The remains of the U.S. was still to the west. Even with the expansion into the Great Plains and the release of the buffalo back into the plains, things are still going a bit wrong. Even so, still Sin is able to find sleep until about 2 in the morning. The next morning started early with an attempt to communicate with the clan forces in Europe, although all they got back was static. It isn't until they begin to relay from the ship in the middle of the Atlantic that they get a response. The voice over the comms, this is Galaxy Commander Christian Wolmer of the Clan Steel Viper. What business do you have with us? Sin responds, This is General Sin of the Earth Forces. I wish to talk to you about an armistice. Wolmer, an armistice? With a free birth? Are you joking? Sin, I assure you that this is for real. Instead of going through the trouble of facing the wrath of my forces, I offer you something else. What could you possibly offer me, free birth? Warmer responds. Sin, sanctuary for you and your people. Warmer pauses for a second and almost laughs. We do not need sanctuary. We have already taken part of this planet and will not long before our other forces come to take the rest. Sin responds, hate to disappoint you, galaxy commander, but the remains of your forces have been bogged down by this planet. Those that were on this continent have been received as my bondsmen and now serve under me. We also know that your forces are in desperate need of supplies. Wilmer, you wish to barter instead of face me in the field of battle? Galaxy Commander, please think about it. Your dropships can barely power up. Your mechs are so battle damaged you have only a few that function. Your soldiers are in desperate need of food and medical care. I ask you to reconsider, not for your sake, not for your title, but for theirs and the health and welfare of your men. I will await your answer. Sin puts down the mic and Dolphine is right there to ask him, what else are you going to give them in return besides supplies? Sin responds, they will have a piece of this plant to call their own until the war is over. Dolphine, what piece of land? Sin pulls up a map and points. Portugal. From there, they can stay out of the way of their returning population and still be able to receive aid from us when needed. Dolphine asks, what if they choose not to move? Sin solemnly says, the commander sounds reasonable. I don't think she will have any problems with being near an abundant food supply especially since we can set up an airport to accommodate her dropships. Dolphine, kind of smug. It seems as you have all this figured out. Sin, let's hope her pride doesn't refuse us. It takes more than three hours for Sin to get a response. Wilmer's voice comes over the radio. I have considered your offer and talked it over with my command staff. 
we have decided that we will not accept your offer. We will not allow you to have control over our clan. Galaxy Commander, please reconsider goodbye, free birth, she snaps at him. Galaxy Commander. Galaxy Commander Wilmer, come in. Delphine puts her hand on his shoulder. I guess she didn't want to protect her soldiers after all. Placing the hand mic down. <sighs> it was the same way here. Before the war, politicians would send men and women to go off and fight battles. They would pretend to cry and in the same breath use our sacrifice to enhance their careers. They never once understood what it takes to serve the people, just themselves. Sin turns and begins to walk out and yells out, Prepare the 1st, 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 7th Divisions. Delphine, for what, sir? We're going to go say hi to the Galaxy Commander. Within two days, everything is prepped and personnel accounted for. The dropships would be hot-dropping mechs and troops before making their approach. This would greatly increase the survivability of their dropships, along with the cargo inside, of course. The movement goes like clockwork. The dropship flips off and fly in perfect formation. It only takes about two, two and a half hours to cross the Atlantic. It will take less than that to reach the drop zone. As Singh climbs into his mech, he begins to shake a little bit. He will be the only one dropping in an assault mech. It's usually too dangerous to drop such a heavy mech, but Sin insisted on leading them on the ground. When he gets the thumbs up from the crew members, the doors underneath him begin to open. The dropship can't fully stop forward movement like the Rothgars, but it's slow enough that he can clear the bay without getting caught up in it. Voice over the radio. 30 seconds! 30 seconds to drop! And it looks like you're going to have company real soon. Keying his hand mic. Affirmative. Just make sure you're ready when we call. Affirmative, sir. Good hunting. Everything on the ground can be seen formation as the doors open. They know what's coming. As the clamps release, the direwolf drops suddenly. The G-forces come up so intently, it's enough to make him think he can taste his own ass. Then the landing jets kick in and everything slows down. Sin was always thinking the whole way, if there's a malfunction... And with the landing jets, I better reach for this ejection handle quick. A mech will hit hard enough to crush itself at that speed and turn the pilot into nothing but chunky salsa. On the way down, he can see the forces begin to move against him. He magnifies the image and notices that almost half of the mechs are limping. Others look like they can barely move. The mech in the lead is missing one arm and only has half of the other. Some areas have had their armor blown away with no protection at all to cover the soft internal devices. As Sin touches down, the jets release, landing with a loud thud, and he makes the call. This is Avil 6 to all units. The enemy is in very poor shape and cannot put up a solid fight. If at all possible, disable them without destroying them. I want man and machine taken in one piece. A bunch of acknowledge lights come over the radio as the first enemy makes its appearance. The Hellbringer is usually a formidable opponent, but this time it's having trouble keeping its balance. Battle scarring is all over it, and it only fired two medium-range lasers at him. With a single PPC shot to the upper right pelvic of the Hellbringer stumbles and falls. The exposed area is easily melted by the heat of the PPC. The mech can no longer twist to use its right hip. Being dead in the water, the infantry rush to take the pilot prisoner after it falls. The pilot coming out looks thin, extremely thin for a clanner, and has to be carried out of its cockpit. Sin gets on his radio again. EZ-6, this is Avil-6, what's the status of the prisoners? Voice comes on. Avil-6, this is EZ-6. These pilots are half dead. Everyone we get has to be brought to the dropship for treatments, and the medics are running out of IVs fast. Sin, confirm, coordinate with Romeo, and get more medical personnel up here. It won't. This is not going to take long. Another shot, and another mech goes down, and it's almost unfair that the Viper troops are falling so fast. There is usually far greater resistance when taking an objective, but today 
There is just not enough fight left in them. In approximately five minutes, Sin is standing next to one of the dropship. It looks worse than the mechs. All the dropships look like they've been gutted for parts and armor, and it's easy to tell that the one working dropship was not going to be a problem. Half the turrets have been blown off and the rest have been stripped clean. Over his PA system, he calls out, This is General Sin of the Earth Forces. Surrender now and you will be allowed to live. If you do, we will guarantee your safety and you will be taken as bondsmen. It takes less than a minute more for the fighting to stop. However, it will take far longer to take care of the new soldiers. When Sin jumps down from his mech, he finds that everyone is half-starved. Sin gets on his handheld radio. Romeo 6, this is Able 6. Response, this is Romeo 6. Romeo 6, make sure you have resupply waiting for you when you get across the ocean. These people are far worse shaped than we thought. Roger, anything particular? Sin sees half-stars clanners pulling out their wounded brethren. Some of the bandages that look like they haven't been changed in weeks. He responds to Romeo. Whatever you can think of, we need a lot of it. Able 6 out. Sin climbs back up into a mech to grab his survival gear and drops it from the cockpit. Heads up! The clanners recognize it immediately and are fighting with their pride not to rush at it. Sin climbs back down and pulls the food and water out. He gives it to the emaciated clanners who immediately give it to their wounded. Sin pulls out the medical supplies and gets it to the medics. Afterwards, he grabs a radio. This is able six to actual to all elements. If you have not already, surrender your food, water, and medical supplies immediately. A response. This is Baker Six. Are you sure about this? Baker Six, able six. They needed a lot more than we do. Now pull out your packs and resupply is already en route. As the supply trucks begin to rumble down the streets, the clanners are almost seem happy that they lost for once. Food, clean water, medical supplies, and of course parts. Everything they need is to brought to them. It doesn't take long before they begin to start looking alive again. Sin stays awake for the next four days, coordinating food and supplies. He even helps bring a MASH, a mobile armor, army surgical hospital, that saves hundreds of lives. Garand is on the run from the coast when he notices how tired Sin is. You should get some rest, sir. You look exhausted. Sin responds, I'm fine. How's the next shipment coming? Garand says, they're offloading now, sir. Sin, great, let me see. He compares the list for a moment. This looks good. We'll not be needing another shipment for a couple of days, at least. I'll make sure you get the next request as soon as possible, as he hands the tablet back. Garand, one more question, sir. Where are all the native personnel? There should be far more than this. Sin raises in, yes, there should However, the former galaxy commander thought they couldn't control the general population, then they would not bother keeping them around. Garan, I see, sir. He looks at Sin, and he sees the hatred in his eyes. So, what did you do to the galaxy commander? Sin responds, If you're thinking I hung the bitch, you're wrong. She's a private now. Maybe over time she'll learn what it means to serve her soldiers. And the population. Garan, if she does not, Sin, then she will learn the hard way not to harm soldiers for her own benefit. As Garand salutes, he begins to walk away, and Sin stops him. Colonel, one more thing. When you return with the next shipment, you will be taking control of this sector. Sir? You heard me. You're the best suitor for this job. You'll be in charge of setting up the new base. You're the, the one with the past experience on setting bases up correctly, of course. I also need someone here that I can actually trust with my life. Garand stood slightly taller, as this was the greatest compliment anyone can give to a cleaner. Yes, sir, he said. Sin says, I'll forward you any data when it becomes available. A quick exchange of salutes and Garand is off. He has a slight grin on his face as he walks back to his transport, a grin you couldn't wipe off if you tried. Sin helps him load the supplies and keeps going throughout the night. It isn't until the next morning that Sin is brought into the medical tent after collapsing into a coma. 
His drive has almost put him completely under. With word of this spreading like fire on gasoline, everyone begins to push themselves even harder. When Sin walks out of the tent after sleeping for almost a day, he finds that it's almost completed dropship standing tall and proud. The round Rothgar is patched up with several functioning mechs at its base. People scurry around like they're under fire. Wiping the sleep from his eyes, Sin simply goes back to work. When Garan returns, he finds the dropships ready to go. Moving everything will be easy now. Now he just has to find a place to set up. Soon he finds a spot near the ocean, which helps a lot. His battalions work feverishly to create the runways and dropships landing pads. Even though they will be living in tents for the next few weeks, no one seems to mind. In two months, the base is nearly complete, and soon they will be able to move on to the next phase. Sin and Delphine work together on a plan on how to bring peace to the North American continent. With preparations complete, it's time to open up a communications line. Sin gets on the mic. I believe it is time to open talks with the American forces on the other side of the divide. I, Delphine, are you sure they'll even listen to you? You do not speak highly of the leadership of that nation. Sin, well... I hope that they have changed due to the you know, current situation. Dolphine, I've been studying your country's history. Sin snaps, it's not exactly my country anymore. Dolphine, I mean no disrespect. I, I only meant to point out that it seems that the former government prided itself on being defiant. Sin replies, slightly grinning. This is probably the only reason I'm still alive. Dolphine responds, I still do not believe that they will be receptive. There is so much that focus on birthright on your own planet. Sin responds, those that brought this country have no more claim to it. There was a time when if more than one person said they want to separate from this country, those that believe they own it would send soldiers to pacify the population. Delphine, sounds more like fear as she thought back to her own history of Kerensky. Sin, yes it does. It was a large pile of arrogance. Delphine asks, why do you not take them by force? Sin responds, I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. She asks, are you still loyal to them? Sin asks, the politicians? She responds, no, the, the country. Sin, my contract ended a long time ago. Besides, what kind of leader do they think people would follow after they abandoned the soldiers under their command? Dalphine says, I remember reading about that, about a general named MacArthur. Sin responds, do not remind me of that schmuck. I'm just happy we found the archives and we can finally show the truth about that asshole. Dalphine by clan law, he would have been hung for abandoning his post like that. Sin says, just do not try to convince the politicians of that. As far as they're concerned, he received orders to withdraw before he left, which is a total lie. Delphine, I still do not understand why he took the only sure defense and ran off into the night. Sin says, I'm still trying to figure that out. Why the hell was his wife and kid doing over there? Or why they even evacuated with all their cronies and left everyone else to die. Delphine, I guess we'll never know. Sin, no, but we can hypothesize. All I want to know is we have the facts. Delphine, do you think the government leaders still think that? Sin, I hope not, or I'm in deep shit.